But if you, do you want me to keep recording right now? Yeah, you can zoom in and zoom out. Can you cut this talking part off like of we're doing right now? Of course, of course. Is there going to be audio at all? Uh, I don't know, maybe. maybe mm. I don't know. Tom McGuinn, <laughs> drawing. I already f***ed up. Hello everybody, this is my first progression video of one of my paintings. Um, I tried to do somewhat of a teaser progression video a few months ago, my Wonder Woman painting. Actually that was last year, but um, nothing as comprehensive as this will be. This will cover everything from the beginning sketch to the final product. The Wonder Woman teaser painting was more of a just that as a teaser and it was a bad angle. I've had several people wanting um, a better angle of it, but there's only so much I can do by myself. Um, right here I'm just kind of roughing out my painting. This is how I usually approach my paintings. I'm going off a couple reference photos. Um, one is my model Gina, who is a wonderful, beautiful model. And um, the other photo is uh, some drapery and I'm going to modify the drawing a bit by wrapping a drapery around her butt. She was actually wearing like a boy shorts swimsuit bottom, but um, I thought this was a little artsier and, and a little more appealing looking. So um, the, I'm just roughing out the gesture, just making sure that the, you know, I got a good arch in her back, some curves. At this point right here, um, I'm actually get, making her boobs bigger and I think I even say in the original video that it's not that her boobs are small and unattractive. It's just that as an artist, I can modify things and do what I want. Um, you know, and, and that's one of the advantages over projecting is that, um, you know, a lot of airbrushers you know, project and that's fine. This is just how I like to work. I just like to sketch things out. Um, I enjoy the process of drawing and, and I can modify anything without being a slave to reference. And um, right now I'm just getting the, the body posture down. Um, I'm kind of um, roughing out the, the proportional grid on her face, the center line right there, the nose and the mouth. You know, I, I just want to get the, the general areas, mark the general landmarks where I want to put features before I start nailing down the likeness. And um, even then I'm going to tweak things a bit especially with her hair so right now I'm working on the, the back arm and um, I think later in the drawing process I'll actually redraw the arm I wasn't happy with its size or length or something like that um, and right there I'm drawing some horizontal lines off from the back I think I, I had the idea of doing some uh, dragonfly wings which is always a concept I had in mind for her but then uh, I just said screw it I don't want to. I didn't want to crop it off on the edge if, uh, if I did do the wings, and I thought the pose was strong enough. And then here's a still shot of the initial gesture drawing. It's a little more work right there. That put I'm using a, a brown pencil. I don't know why. I just had it lying around, and I didn't want to go too dark uh, right away. Um, right there, you just saw that. Um, I started drawing with a, a regular HB lead pencil, mechanical pencil, nothing fancy. And I already started drawing in the features of her face. I usually start with the face uh, and then I'll, I'll kind of move down to her hands. You know, I, I kind of move, or I, I'll start with the most important aspect, which is to me the face, if I can get a likeness and make it look right. Um, because if I'm not happy with the face, the rest of the drawing to me is a waste. I'll, I mean, I'll trash the entire drawing. If the face sucks or I'll just start all over, I'll just keep erasing and come back to it later. I'll do the hands next because, you know, the, you got to be really delicate with the hands to make them look right. Right now, I'm just kind of slowly rendering the hair. I just start with the dark parts. And then um, the, by, by starting with the darkest strands and parts, you know, you're, you're I'm establishing my landmarks. Um, so it's easier to do the, the, the gray areas and the gray tones and the highlights. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, as I'm drawing, it looks like I'm drawing pretty tightly, but in my head I'm always keeping in mind of the light source and, and trying to sculpt the hair as I shade. Um, 
to make it to give it more of a form as opposed to drawing individual strands of hair and there you see a still shot of it um, a lot of it done I took a lot of liberty too like I said by drawing it myself I, I took a lot of liberty with her bangs the way I make it swoop out kind of give it a little dynamic feel there uh, I have the point held and now I'm working on the hands and, and I said before I moved to the hands next because I feel that they are very important to get right. If I can't get that right, I'll either keep working on it or I'll just, in frustration, trash the whole drawing. Um, the reason why I use a colored pencil is because, well, the colored pencil is really soft. And for some reason, the softer lead keeps me loose. And at that stage I, of roughing it out, I want to stay very loose because you, you just want to capture the essence and the pose of the figure at that point. You're not worrying about details. Um, as far as it being like a, a, a brown orangey color, it kind of looks orange actually. Um, I'm not too worried about that because I know that when I overlay the flesh tones on top, it's going to conceal it. Um, even so, with my method, which is basically drawing it out in black and white and then overlaying with airbrush, I'm not too concerned with whether my pencil lines show. I kind of want them to show, that's a point. I mean, I, I lay the airbrush colors on top transparently anyway. So I kind of approach the drawing in a more, I guess they call it a classical way, as I do my uh, my, my value drawing first, and then I'll just put uh, transparent colors on top. Um, I usually mix my own uh, colors and flesh tones depending on the painting and the situation, but for this painting I'm actually experimenting with my friend Steve Driscoll's uh, flesh tone color set through Comart. He's an excellent airbrusher and I thought I'd give them a test run. All the line work is completed there. I smeared toilet paper at this stage to um, drag the graphite all over the place to kind of give it uh, a gray value. Then I'll scrub out the highlights with an electric eraser, a kneaded eraser, and a pink gum eraser. I'll then go back in uh, with a pencil again and refine the drawing one more time before I put paint uh, on top. Then I'll use a, a brush and ink to establish the black areas first. And uh, this is a sable brush and there you see all the black areas filled in. That's my first uh, airbrush job right there is to do the, the clothing, the top and the, the drapery around her, um, her bottom. So. Um, I'm just using like a, a very light uh, purple that I mixed, like opaque white, transparent violet, and something else I forgot. Right there, I'm kind of using a template to uh, make a couple more stronger definitions in the fold. And I just kind of go back and forth right now. I'm using an uh, eraser for the highlights uh, in between light layers. Here's the initial layer using uh, Steve Driscoll's uh, flesh tone colors. I'm using um, uh, some flesh tone colors in the hair too, it actually works just fine, but um, the paint set is highly recommended to beginners who uh, don't like to mix their own flesh tones or who aren't that familiar with uh, color theory or, or mixing anything. And I'm doing very light layers and then I'm erasing in between. And like I said, I'll use an electric eraser, a kneaded eraser, a pink gum eraser, and an eraser stick that you can sharpen. There you see I use a template again to uh, do uh, the more defined parts of uh, the curvature of the hair strands using whatever tool I need to get the, the sharpness that I want. Here I've added uh, blue to the rim light in the back of Gina's hair just to you know give it a cool um, contrast to her skin tones and that uh, really pops the hair out right there. I've also airbrushed a slight glow to the blue rim lights and then I scrub highlights into that. Um, here's the finished painting. The final step is using a, a fine paintbrush and I thin down the acrylic paints and kind of use them as watercolors for details like mostly the facial features like the eyes and the nose and the lips and the hair, um, doing the individual strands and stuff and the fingers and fingernails and that's how I finish my product. So I hope you like this video and if you uh, want to see more let me know. Thanks again. Bye.